Snus drunk. The Super Nintendo has three very different Batman games in its library. Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Let's start with Batman Returns, which is a classic styled beat-em-up made by Konami, although if I didn't know any better, I'd think this game were from Capcom. This game has a big Final Fight vibe with the huge sprites, crisp sound, and very satisfying gameplay. Yep, that's right, this is another beat-em-up with a great punch kick sound. That's like my trademark at this point. One thing this game does very well is allow you to get all the enemies on one side of the screen, and this is critical in a game like this if you want to be able to progress far and see the whole game. Not only that, you can knock guys' heads together like the Three Stooges. You can even throw guys through windows, which is freaking awesome. You're also able to block, which is useful, and you get a variety of weapons to use. There's a surprising bit of variety in the gameplay as well. One stage has you use Batman's belt grappling hook to avoid enemy fire here, and another stage has you gun down goons in the Batmobile. The game follows the movie pretty closely, if that's important to you. Catwoman and Penguin are prominently involved, of course, and there's lots of cutscenes with images straight from the movie. Batman Returns also saw releases on NES, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Game Gear, and lots of other systems, but I can't speak to any of those. All I can say is that the Super Nintendo version is a very strong beat-em-up, and a somewhat rare case of a movie licensed game being a lot of fun. Next, we traverse back in the complete opposite direction with Batman Forever. Now, this is the kind of lazy, half-assed crap we're used to seeing from licensed games, because this is awful. Angry Video Game Nerd already took a dump on this game, and I can't say it better than he can, but still, this game is a massive disappointment. First of all, the character animations, D-pad controls, and buttons are all cloned from the Mortal Kombat series. It's clunky and stiff enough as a fighting game, but it's way worse as a platformer. Yeah, that's right, this game is a platformer, or it tries to be, sort of. Right away you have no freaking clue where to go until you dick around and find that you're supposed to go up somehow using Batman's belt grappling hook. And how do you use this? You press select and then up. What the hell is that? And then to jump down someplace, you'd think it'd be selecting down maybe, but no, it's down in R. What, did they just throw a bunch of buttons into a hat and just pull out a bunch of random combinations for random shit? It's just awful. Now, sometimes mediocre gameplay can be forgiven in games like this as long as they nail the presentation, like for example, X-Men for Sega Genesis. But number one, the gameplay here is much worse than mediocre, and number two, everything is way too dark, and Batman looks like 90s Batman, but Robin inexplicably looks like 1966 Robin. Why? And the villains here are all these doofy looking guys. What exactly are they going for here? It's just a big mishmash of random shit, and it just doesn't work. This game is seriously bad. Adventures of Batman and Robin, however, might be the best game of the three. This one is based off of the outstanding Batman animated series. This is yet another great Konami title that nails down the visual style of the source material perfectly. Plus, this game has friggin' everybody. Joker, Penguin, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, on and on. This is how you make a stylish action platformer. Take note, Batman Forever. Batman has tons of abilities, and they're all intuitive. You can grab enemies and toss them, just like in a beat-em-up. You can duck and do a roll by pressing down and jump, and the A button uses Batman's special weapon, of which he has several. The Batarang, smoke bombs, x-ray goggles, a grappling gun, and each one is useful more than once throughout the game. Not only that, but the old wall jump is back from the NES game. That's awesome. The music is tremendous, just as it is in the series. And it can't be overstated how great this game looks. I mean, just look at this. If there's a flaw, it's these clunky overhead Batmobile stages. It reminds me of the overhead stages in Contra 3, but worse. I just wanted to get past these so I could play some more of the platforming stages. Also, despite the title, this game is single player only. Robin isn't even a playable character. Not that anyone would care, but still. There's also a Genesis version which is way, way different. It's a multiplayer run and gun game that even includes shoot 'em up levels. And it is insanely fun in its own right. In fact, it might be one of the 20 best Genesis games ever. It's that good. It's almost like a Batmanized version of Pocky and Rocky or Gunstar Heroes. Be forewarned though, the music is terrible, and it's really really hard, but that game is definitely worth checking out. So there you go, three distinctly different Batman Super Nintendo games. Check out Batman Returns if you're pining for an old school beat-em-up, avoid the hell out of Batman Forever, and definitely check out Adventures of Batman and Robin on both Super Nintendo and Genesis. But here's the depressing part where I mention the prices. Adventures of Batman and Robin is like 70 bucks for Super Nintendo, but luckily it's around like 12 bucks for Sega Genesis, and same with Batman Returns. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.